So our last presenter of the day is Reagan. Uh, Reagan, are you ready to go? Yep. Awesome. Give me a moment to get set up. Snake a little bit 
uh, but he remained on staff, staff, staff and still stayed uh, affiliated with them. And he even worked to force a merger between the Black Panthers and SNCC. And uh, he also wrote a book titled Black Panther with Charles B. Hamilton, and he gave speeches outlining his vision of like what the Black Panthers should be. However, after the 1986 riots, some Black Panther leaders felt it was more important to include white activists in their movement in order for the progression of the Black Panthers and um, just racial equality. But uh, Carmichael was very against the integration of the Black Panthers and he wanted, as I said, he preached black separatism and so he felt it was important to keep the Black Panther, Panthers only African American. And he was also in agreement with Malcolm X that white activists needed to organize their own communities before trying to lead black people. That was his main argument for black separatism. So upon moving away from the Black Panthers, uh, he actually moved to New Guinea uh, and he, that's his quote for his reason, his American does not belong to the blacks. And he changed his name to Kwame Ture, Ture in 1978 in order of the president of Ghana and the president of Guinea. Um, while he was in Africa, he promoted African socialism and Pan-Africanism, and he wrote a book on Pan-Africanism. Pan he also, while he was in New Guinea, um, wrote a formal rejection of the Black Panthers because they did move forward with including white activists in their movement, and so he sent out a, he published a formal rejection letter from them. And he was diagnosed with prostate cancer while he was in New Guinea, where he spent the rest of his life. And uh, he is known for saying that his prostate cancer was given to him by the forces of American imperialism and the others who conspired with him. And he died at age 57 on November 15th, 1998. Yeah, that's it. Questions? Yeah. Did he do any activism work while he was in New Guinea? Do you know? Or did he just he, like... Yeah. Um, he did a lot of like promoting uh, black pride and kind of... it To me, it seems a bit like he kind of started back in like once he moved to Guinea with where he started in the US a bit. Um, he still kept his like uh, philosophies of like violence as a form of self-defense um, and black separatism, but he did uh, preach still quite a bit when he was in Guinea as well and kind of moved towards the like African pride and not just black pride, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Does the SNCC still exist in, it, in that form or in a new organization? I'm not actually sure. I did. I didn't do a lot of research on like where it is now. Um, I didn't actually. He actually was involved in a different branch of SNCC originally, uh, which was the one affiliated with the university. Um, and they were just really famous for freedom rides, mostly. That was like their big claim to fame, uh, from what I gathered in my research. But considering that's not exactly like a huge thing now, yeah. I'm not really sure if they still exist or if it dissolves. This is the first time. Yeah, yeah. So. me too, before researching. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions for Reagan? Yeah. Um, can you explain what pan Africanism is? Honestly, I'm not really sure. I did not look into it. Um, a lot of that was like his later in life stuff, and I have not read the books that he's written. Um, no. Pan Africanism is the idea that people across the continent of Africa um, work together um, a little bit in opposition to some of the boundaries that were created after World War II and then by, by basically by white co colonialists, and so that. Um, the borders between Kenya and Tanzania are kind of arbitrary and they were forced upon the people there. And the idea that, that people start working together um, in opposition to those other types of concerns. Would one that aspect be of it. Would that mean that there was also some sort of a shared economy in those? It might have been. I'm not sure that was there. Because I've not heard that term, if it is a term, and not just socialism in Africa. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not sure, honestly. <laughs> I think I think you're right, though. I think it is like different than just socialism in Africa. I think he was. I mean, he did preach like African, er, yeah, black and African independence from a socioeconomic standpoint. So I think, yeah, I think in the along the lines of Pan Africanism, he probably preached the same thing as far as uh, socialism as well. Can you go back one slide, Multi? Yes, I can. The, um, the, the idea that Black Panthers had a schism because of disagreements about including white activists, um, I don't have a question for you, I just think it raises questions about who can be a part of the struggle for equality, and I wonder, I wonder about that. Okay. Thank you. I think you we're coming me. up. Yeah, we're coming up on the end of lunch, um, and so I'm going to give you all time uh, to be able to get to your next class. Um, tomorrow we are going to have two presentations. Um, Carol will be presenting Marsha P. Johnson and sort of Stonewall Riots. Oh. And then we have the dream team of Paul, Kylie, and Tanya to talk about fire and rusted. So uh, I hope to see you all tomorrow. And thank everyone for coming to the presentation today. And thank you to all of you. Thank you.